Okay, so what is c to the power two to the power zero? Just c, right? Because this is c to the power one equal to c, which is easy, then this is one zero zero negative one, right? How about this one? z to the power two to the power one. Uh, say again, c to the power 2. Yeah. Yeah. Which is equal to z times c, right? Tensor, uh, this is not tensor product. This is, right? Tensor product, you expand the space to a larger dimension, right? This is just a multiplication of matrix, which is equals to 1, 0, 0, negative 1 times 1, 0, 0, negative. But you learned that before. Do you remember the poly matrix? What is the square of the poly matrix? Huh? No, not itself. Identity. Identity, right? X square, Y square, Z square, I square, they all got. But you just do a calculation. Indeed, it is true. This is 1, 0, 0, 1. Because negative 1 times 1. So it's identity. S is better. So that is great. We don't need to implement this. It turned out in this case, we don't need to implement this part because this is just... Uh, Identity, right? So when zero, you apply identity. When it is one, you apply identity. Then there is nothing. Always identity, right? So if we want to study the Z2, right? This. Um, what do I want to say? Uh, yeah, yes. I, I'm sorry, I missed one thing. Yes, I will do this in the next uh, slide. So I, what I want to say is this. We need to talk about the control version. Now, we can build a big matrix, but it's very tedious. Now, we are very good. We need to have some feeling, some insight. Now, we'll do E124, right? Look at the transistor. This is 1 over GM, this is R out. We don't need to solve the small circuit, right? Common gate, right? Uh, the common gate input impedance or the cascode. Now let's look at that. This one is solved, easy. This one is easy. How do I do the control Z circuit, right? We already, of course, we know the matrix, but let's look at this. We said because E1 is the eigen vector of C. Then it means C times E1 equals to lambda 1 E1, right? Now, then what is the meaning of control C? Then, in the control C, Z version, only apply Z if the control bit equal to 1, right? Which also means when I apply C, it means you just multiply lambda 1 if the control bit equal to 1, right? You can al almost say that. Right? But the main problem, main thing is that now we see that it only apply Z if the uh if if the control B is what. So let's take a look, right? Next next page, right? So now I want to see what is C2. What is that? This is equals to uh, let me uh copy z1, otherwise you 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 won't be able to see easily. Let me copy one more time. Z1 equals to one over two zero zero uh e1 plus one zero e1 
plus, I mean, 0, 1, E1, and then 1, 0, E1, and then plus 1, 1, E1. That's what we just did, right, with the harder market. Is that okay? Now, if I apply this, uh, the control Z to it, right, or the whole version to it, What would it be if this bit is zero, we do nothing. If this bit is zero, we do nothing. But if this bit is one, this is a least significant bit, we are going to apply the Z gate to it. If this is one, we're going to apply C square gate to it, right? So based on this, I know that this is equal to zero, zero, nothing, plus zero, one, C, E, one, plus one, zero, C square, E, one, plus one, one, C square, C, E, one. Do you see that? Right? We don't need to use matrix because based on our understanding of the control gate, when this is zero for this state, it applies nothing, right? When this is zero, one, zero, one, then I don't apply this one, I only apply the C. When this is one, zero, I apply C squared, although it is I, we write it here. The reason I write it here is because you can prove a general case by going through this later also. I'm not going to show here, but it's in the textbook, right? And then when both are one, then I apply C, Z squared and C. So based on this, I actually can even write uh, even a more instructive in a more instructive way. Although this is zero, zero, isn't that this is just C to the power zero times C to the power zero, E1, right? And this one is just zero, one, right? Z to the power zero, C to the power one, E1. Okay, and this is one zero is c to the power two, c to the power zero, e one, right? Because I had c to the power two, right? Zero power is because of this one qb, right? And this is z to the power, I mean, one one c to the power two, c to the power c to the power one. E1. So in the one zero term, Z2 comes first? Uh, one zero terms, yeah. Z2 comes, uh, 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 yes, it, it, uh, okay, that is a good question. Hold on. It comes first, it doesn't matter, you are right. It actually, in my drawing, it goes first, should be the C to the power two, right? But because they're all C, so they commute, I can swap them. Good question, right? I did not thought about this, but because they commute, they are just themselves, right? I can swap them. And the reason I write in this way is because it's very clear that, what do you see? I can say this is equal to one over two, zero, c to the power zero, e one, plus one, c to the power one, e one, plus two, z to the power two, e one, plus three, z to the power three, e one. If I write them in de decimal, Right, let's take a break. Does this make sense to you? Right? So the uh, quantum phase estimation algorithm in this part, basically what it does is that you apply C to the power that time when the controlling qubit is of that value. Basically what we're saying, this is equal to one over uh, two, times summation j equal to zero to three. 
and then j z to the power j e1. What it does is that you give the eigenvector and then for each of these basis state, correspondingly, I apply z to the power j time. Make sense? And that is the beauty you are going to see later, right? It is, but I keep it because I, I deliberately keep it so that in the future, if you have other matrix, you can just plug in, right? And, uh, uh, and of course, the main reason here is to show you this summation. If I make it identity, you cannot see that, yeah. Which is equal to what? Again, I already told you. When, just I told you here, right? You apply the z to e, you get lambda, right? Because it's the eigenvector. You get one over two summation j equal to zero to three, j lambda to the power j. E one, okay? And of course, it is equal to lambda. Again, I don't know its unity. So it's e to the power i 2 pi phi. That is lambda, right? Times j. And then I have j, I have e1. Let me check if I'm correct. And in this particular case, I know what is phi, correct? Phi is equal to 1 over 2. This one, phi. Phi is one over two. Yeah, this one, right? Is equal to one over two. So may, let me write it again. Equals to one over two, summation j equal to zero, three, e to the power i, two pi, one over two. I deliberately write that. You will see later, right? Why I don't simplify it, okay? Uh, actually, in the homework, but yeah, but maybe I know I, I you already have answer in the test book. I, I'll ask you to maybe uh, try other cases. But this is the point, right? You see that by doing this Hadamard gate and then this control operation, I come up with a superposition which is weighted by the J and also is phase. And then later, I'm going to do a quantum Fourier transformation to extract J. And that's what I'm going to show you. But are you okay with this? Everyone okay with here? Exactly. That is only the case when the eigenvector is E1. I over 2, 1 over 2 as phi is because we input E1. And that is what we are trying to show you here, right? Because I input E1. And because this E1 is the eigenvector of Z, that's why uh, Z applied to E1 is lambda 1. Okay, here I call it lambda 1, maybe. Let me don't call it, just call it lambda, right? Because later I just all call it lambda. No, I just pick one example. Right, I only I just pick one e one. Right, e zero will be zero. Yeah, you will see that also. I just pick an example. Here's purely numerical example, but you can substitute. Right now, you can just call this phi for a general case in, instead of putting one over two. Right, but I make it easy by doing this example. Okay. Okay, so let me summarize one more time. What do we get from z two? It is 1 over 2, summation, j equal to 0, 3, e to the power i, 2 pi, 1 over 2, the whole thing times j, and then j. E1, okay? Now, how about 4? Uh, I mean, three, the output. What is the output? We're not going to go through this matrix again. It's quantum Fourier transform. And you only transform what? 
UQFT. How do you write the, the matrix that is applying to this region? UQFT is only applied to where? The MSV, the C register, right? And then you tensor product with the identity matrix for the B register, right? Right, this is to the C register. This is to the B register. Is that okay? And this is applied to C2, right? So it means E is not going to have any effect, right? Basically we're saying we apply, because again, it is linear, we apply E i 2 pi 1 over 2 j, apply the u q f t directly on j. And e has nothing to do with this because e get i, okay? Are the Canadian get their law, US get its law. Make sense? Because again, this is B register. This is, I mean, this is C register. This is B register. When you apply this one, quantum Fourier transform only apply to the C register and the identity matrix apply to the B register, which is E, E1. Okay? So all we need to evaluate is what is quantum Fourier transform applied to J? And we know that already. I'm sure that you will forgot, right? So I will just give you the answer. You just check what you... Uh, get before. But if you remember, it is just a mixing of all the states. It's just a linear combination of all the states. It is summation, let's call it zero, I mean to call it k, and it goes from, how many qubits do we have? Two qubit, right? So it's one over square root four. Yeah, one over two to the power n over two, right? So one over square root four. All the way to three. And then I have k, right? It just rotates, become a linear combination of k, but weighted by what? Do you remember? Yeah. I would just like this e to the power, omega to the power, kj. Yeah, this is easy to memorize. And then you substitute omega. What is omega? e to the power i, 2 pi, by 4, 2 to the power 2, because 2 qubit by 4, right? Now, that is the beauty here. Is of course, uh, very messy. First, 1 over square root four is 2. I'm going to take this out, 1 over 4. That's okay. I have two summation, right? But now you should very familiar with this summation. It's nothing but just summation k equal to 0, 3. I swap them. It doesn't matter. j equals 0 to 3. Yeah? Here, I put a k. E here. The only thing I need to care about is this e to the power i 2 pi 1 over 2 j minus kj, right? Omega to the power negative kj, which is on e to the power i 2 pi over 4. I need more space. kj. Now, I want you to be familiar with this, right? If you think it's not familiar, just make sure that you understand. Basically, this is a summation. It say what? I sum over k. k equals 0 plus k equals 1 plus k equals 2 plus k equals 3, right? This whole thing. And then you continue with this. Now, j equals 0, you do this one time. j equal to 1, you do this another time. j equal 3, do this another time, right? And then, of course, then you will get 16 terms, right? And this is basically the same as you pull up the summation and you do this just from j equals 0 to 3 and k equals 0 to 3 and to get this one. And this is the ma magic, right? 
What is this? This is equals to e to the power i 2 pi times 1 over 2 minus k divided by 4 j. Am I right? I might do something wrong. Uh, yes, which is correct. Yeah. Which one? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You apply the quantum Fourier transform to J. And this is the equation of quantum Fourier transform, right? You apply quantum Fourier transform to this basis vector J, it becomes a linear combination of all basis vector. Let's say this is three, it becomes zero, one, two, three, but it weighted by omega two to the power negative kj. That is the quantum Fourier transform, yeah? Now this one actually not exact, I need to rewrite it. I'm going to rewrite it as e to the power i 2 pi divided by 4, 2 minus k, j. The reason I want to do this because this is equals to omega, right? Time to the power 2 minus k, j. Is that okay? Now do not forget this is inside the summation. Do you remember when we sum over the j, what will happen? You sum over the nth root of unity. This is the nth root of unity. Huh? Remember we, nth roots of unity distribute on the circle, right? When you sum them together, you get what? You get zero if Do I still have one slide? No more. Yes, you are right. Let me, I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah. This one, right? This is, because it is a summation, so it is equal to zero if, 2 minus k not equals to 0. This is the so-called destructive interference we learned in the envelope of unity, right? It is equals to 1 if 2 minus k equals to zero, which means if k equal to two. Do you see that? So you only have one state left when we do the measurement. It will collapse to only two because all the coefficients are zero except one of them. And that is when k equal to two. But why is k equal to two? Let's take a closer look here. It means k equals to 4 times 1 over 2 because of this one, right? The reason we get k equal to 2 minus k is because we start with 1 minus 2 mi minus k over 4. But 1 over 2 is what? Is the phase. This is exactly because this is your 2 to the power n times the phase. So you see that in a quantum phase estimation, eventually when you measure this qubit, only the basis state correspond to the phase will be measurable. Others has zero amplitude. And because when I measure, I get it, then I know what the phase it is. Yeah, the phase correspond to the eigenvalue of the gate that you are interested in. Um, okay, um, so if I had a pi or two rotation, what happens? 
If you have a pi over two rotation gates and your input depends on what eigenvector you put in, then you will get the phase corresponding to the eigenvalue of that eigenvector. Okay. Because now it is a Z gate, so I'm getting the phase of the eigenvalue of the Z gate. If you have another rotation gate, whatever gate, Hadama gate, whatever gate, mm -hmm. then you will get the eigenvalue of the uh, eigen, I mean, you will get the phase of the eigenvalue of that gate. Now remember, that gate might not be simple gate, right? Because the whole circuit itself is a gate. It's just a matrix. Everything in the quantum computer, right, is gate model. It's just a unitary matrix. Combine them together, right? So we can, when we try to solve a physical system, we formulate it so that we, it is equivalent to finding the phase of the eigenvalue. And then through superposition, we can find all of them at the same time. And then do other things to solve it. Of, co of course, it's very important. The phase of the eigenvalue is the eigenvalue itself. Because the eigenvalue is the, in the form of e to the power i2 pi times phi. Because it's unitary. If I know the phase, I know the eigenvalue. Yeah? And if I know the eigenvalue, I know the matrix. I know the eigenvector, right? All the problem we are solving difficult in linear algebra is how to find the eigenvalue, how to diagonalize a matrix, including all the solve the system of linear equation. Eventually, the bottleneck is about how to diagonalize the matrix. Yeah? So you find the phase, you know many things. If I had a gate and I wanted to figure out its phase, how much rotation is causing, can I... No, no, no. Again, phase doesn't mean rotation that is causing. Phase, we're talking the phase of the eigenvalue. Basically, it's talking about the value, right? Because... The eigenvalues is e to the power i2 pi phi, and then we have this phase. But uh, eigenvalue doesn't mean that how much is rotating. It does not. It does not, right? Hadamard gate it rotate by something, but its eigenvalue does not tell us what it is rotating, right? It does not at all. Yeah. So do not confuse the phase and the rotation of vector. They may have some correlation, but we are talking about the eigenvalue itself. Yeah. Okay, very good. So finally, I don't. I uh, I think I just spent one more minute or so, right? So this is how we implement the quantum phase estimation in Qiskit, right? So again, the top is the LSB, the bottom is the MSB. We try to put in E one by putting what? Uh, a not gate, so this is equal to one, yeah, because the input are all zero, right? Now I only have one gate here, which is control Z. Why? Because I just proved to you that C square is identity. Very good, right? And we only have control Z, and this is the control Z. So this is not the swap gate, right? In I in case, this is the swap gate, right? This control Z. Hadama gate, control C, quantum Fourier transform of two qubit. Again, first one get the H, second one get a H and then a phase shift, and then a swap gate. Then I do the measurement. So what should I get? I would expect to get two to the power two times one over two, which is two, right? One zero, I expect to get one zero. And I do get one zero zero because the last one is zero. The LSB has no, I do get one zero, right? So I estimate the phase successfully. I forgot if this is simulation or real, real computer, but uh, probably it's simulation that I don't have error, okay? Finally, if you have an n qubit quantum phase estimation, I already told you, it's easy. Again, two group, B register and C register. B register, it has m qubits, depends on the dimension of your gates, right? So if your dimension is 2 to the power m, 
by 2 to the power m, then you need m qubits. You put in a basis state, a vector, a, a eigen vector, right? In the serial register, start with zero, do the su uh, linear superposition using Hadamard gate, and then you use this control U operation. I'm interested in finding the phase of the eigenvector of U, a phase of the eigenvalue of U. And do what? Two to the power zero if distance is one, two to the power uh, n minus two if two distance is n minus one, right? If distance is n, is n minus one. Finally, do a n qubit quantum Fourier transform. You know how to construct already. And I thought, yeah, and that's it. And then you do measurement here. Here is the measurement. Which will only give you 2 to the power n times the phase. Okay. And now you can appreciate how important is this, how many nine I need, because this is to increase the resolution. If you only have one nine, you cannot distinguish different eigenvalues. They all give you either zero and one. Yeah. So that's it. Yeah, that's quantum phase estimation. And with this, you can try to learn the uh, HHL yourself. Okay, I have a paper on that. So, so I was.